excited to talk about this topic, tech versus touch, which was really echoed a lot in Mitch's presentation this morning and other presentations we've heard throughout the conference. Um, as you know, Jake and I are from Wyden, and a big part of what we do at Wyden is to help people like you connect your content with other people who need it. So people that we work with every day, like the project managers who need a logo file in a different format, or designers who need to send out large size files, or copywriters who want to know that they have the right version of the layout. And this word connect has taken on a range of meanings in recent years. So we decided to investigate the idea of connectivity with our own research, and we're here to share the impact of, a, of our findings on creative teams. So for our research, we surveyed 200 marketing, creative, and IT professionals. And then we conducted one-on-one -on -one phone interviews with 21 people, also creative and marketing professionals. And we focused on what it means to connect and what the future holds for a connected marketing world. And these are the key points that we're going to cover today. First, we're going to talk about the meaning behind being connected, which some of that's in the infographic that we handed out to you before lunch. We're going to talk more about the tools that they're using every day, many of which we've already mentioned. We're going to talk about why the human element is really necessary for true connections to take place. And we'll share some examples from organizations who we think are doing a great job connecting in different ways. And then last, we're going to show how collaboration, workflow, and digital asset management can really support connectivities by sharing a few stories with you from customers at White. So Nish mentioned his dream about Steve Jobs this morning. Well, here's a great quote from Steve Jobs. And it's a simple idea, really. But in terms of creativity, there are many ways for connecting things. There's ideation, there's customer experience, user experience, collaboration, technology, and then, of course, the integration of those technologies that make it easier for us to do the work we do. So this quote served as a pretty big compass for our research. And as the title of our presentation implies, our findings fell into two camps. There was tech, and there was touch. And in terms of the human side of connecting, we're going to refer to this as touch technology. The first question we asked all of our research participants was, what does it mean to you to be connected? And we encourage you to ask yourself this question. It, it actually inspires some pretty soulful internal conversations. And we left it general on purpose, because we wanted to see how many layers the word connect really has. Now, even if you can't read all of these answers from back there, you can see that there was a range of responses. And the top three were accessing information, staying current or knowing what's going on, and staying in touch with others. So at first glance, you might think that accessing information and knowing what's going on are more about the technology side. But trust me, the technology is in there. When we get information we need, or we know what's going on, we feel something. We feel fulfilled. We feel confident. And there's a very big human impact behind that. Our qualitative responses expanded on this, with people saying they want to connect with others like themselves, like at this event. People in the same field, or who have the same skill set. And they feel that collaboration is best done in person, where you can see facial expressions, hear tone of voice, and of course experience that back and forth dialogue that sparks creative energy. And, and yesterday in Eric's keynote, he talked about that human spark. Our qualitative responses also showed that people want to collaborate in like-minded communities either formally or informally. And when we asked them how important communities were to their career growth and satisfaction, 83% of the people we spoke with said someone or very. Now this is a quote from one of our research participants, John Bostoffel. He's the owner of a design firm in Chicago called Bark Design. And he speaks to the idea of these small, unstructured groups or micro-communities where there's an opportunity for authentic communications to take place very quickly because you're bonding around a common interest. These micro-communities are on the rise because of what John says here, that it's really nice to get together and discuss projects in an in informal, unstructured way. And now we're going to get into the digital side of connecting, or the technology. We asked our participants about the different tools they're using every day, and many of them have been mentioned so far at this conference, but the top ones were online communication tools, so something like a Slack, email marketing, social media, and project management. And as we've heard over the past few days, there are a lot of great tools out there. But this list is a shit ton to manage on your own. It's a lot of stuff. So it's no surprise that 67% of our interview participants said usability or user interface would sway their loyalty from one tool to another. They want technologies that do what they say, which is the functionality part, 
yet provide enjoyable, good experiences. And that's the touch analogy part. So in addition to so many tools to manage, our participants also voiced concern about so much connectivity, which really boiled down to one question. Can we be too connected? And our research indicates that yes, sometimes we can be. If we're too connected to all of these things mentioned here, to our tools, to meetings with other people, to process and to data, the work doesn't get done, and we do not see things in a meaningful way. The irony is that we need to not be connected to our digital tools all the time to feel connected and to be creative. Time without digital devices is when we come up with our best ideas because the mind is free to wander without the confines of rules. This is a quote from Robert Rose. You may or may not know him. He's the content strategy advisor for the Content Marketing Institute, and he often speaks publicly about marketing. He says that disconnecting from devices is the most important time he spends because it's when he comes up with anything interesting he has to say. Well, we spoke with several amazing companies during our research, but there are a couple who had some great advice about connecting, and we want to share them with you. The first is a healthcare planning firm in the Midwest called Erdman, and we spoke with Jenny Meyer, who is the vice president of brand there. Their team is connecting by collaborating in different ways to inspire more involvement from everyone at the company. So they started what they um, they started doing what they call a monthly creative collab. People from all of their teams, so sales, marketing, creative, IT, and even HR, take off together once a month to get inspired and brainstorm around one idea. They go someplace where they can focus, like a cafe, or you can see here they're in a paint store, the Sherwin Williams paint store talking about color. Um, because as creatives, we often forget to build in time, but we simply just don't have the time that we need to get things done. So since they started doing this, idea generation has soared, employees feel connected and more empowered because anyone from any team can choose the monthly idea. And they're communicating more across the whole company. Second is a name you'll all recognize, LinkedIn. And here we talked with a great guy named Mike Pilars, who's one of their content marketing evangelists. And he helps content marketers to become better at talking about content. Mike says we can create great work by solving the problems of our audience, a very common theme throughout the conference here. And to understand what those problems are, he suggests you talk to the people closest to you. So ask your customer service team if you have one. What four or five questions were you asked this week? And then create content to help your audience answer those questions. Or ask your sales team, what pain points and challenges are people trying to solve for today? And then create content to help your audience ease their pain. And then, of course, ask your marketing team. What keywords are people using to research our product or our service? And then create content about information your audience is searching for. And if you work in an agency, this is a really great way to approach the creative work you do for your clients. You're staying relevant for yourself and them. So by tapping into your other teams, you gain a better understanding of the passions behind your audience, which allows you to create work from a totally new point of view. You build lasting connections with people by being helpful because they remember you. And you develop a direct connection with an audience in a channel that you own. And this is probably the most, most important thing, rather than a channel you have to pay for. These two organizations may seem very different to you. One's large, one's small, they're in totally different industries. But they both face the same challenges creating their content, just like all the other companies that you do, and just like you do, just like we do at Widen. The biggest challenges they face range from measuring content effectiveness, again, a huge theme here, to finding, planning, reviewing, and approving projects, another key theme, and of course, sharing content, distributing it, getting it in the hands of the people who need it when they need it. They also talked about other common challenges, like lack of bandwidth to get things done, um, not having the skills or expertise on a team, so they don't have a designer, or they don't have a writer who really understands their industry. They're juggling too many activities without understanding the goals of why they're producing the creative work that they are. And then, of course, just producing good content consistently. So we asked many more questions of our participants, which you can read about in our full report if you'd like. It's at our booth. But at the end of the day, we had three big findings surface from our research. And I just want to preface it by saying there's nothing really earth-shattering about our findings, but it was really good validation for what people really want from us and what we need to deliver as a result of that. So first, people want to connect to satisfy human needs. 
there are actually recent studies out there by psychologists at Harvard and other places that show the human brain is actually hardwired to connect. So it's in our DNA. Can't, you can't forget that. Also, collaboration and community, they enable people to achieve this human satisfaction that they crave. And it doesn't mean just sitting here in a room like we are right now. It means building something greater together than we can on our own. And our digital tools are the conduit that make human interaction possible on a whole different level, on a whole different level. So they have to incorporate that human touch too. So it's because of these findings that you can see how digital asset management, workflow type solutions, and project management solutions, they all come into play because they all solve these challenges that creatives and marketers are facing today and talking about. And now Jake's gonna share more on content technology through a few stories about Biden customers that also reflect these findings. That's right, I'm gonna share more about our tech and technology in connecting creative operations from Biden's point of view and connecting some of these key themes into digital asset management and, and workflow technologies. Now, we like to say that DAM does more than store, and in some cases, storage or repository is, is really all you need. But uh, DAM can be a foundation to your creative and content operations. It's about tech and touch, key theme here, don't forget that. And it's a central theme in connecting content and creative operations. Uh, we like to say DAM is a server of connectivity for multiple purposes in finding, reviewing, sharing, and really carrying out all functions of the creative process with your marketing content. Now when we talk about connectivity and digital asset management, we like to talk from beginning to end across the entire content life cycle, from ideation and planning to preservation and archiving, if that makes sense for your business. Now one of the most critical points of that content life cycle is that point of experience where that content intersects with your customers. And there are all sorts of tools out there, as Jared mentioned before, with that marketing technology super graphic of over 4,000 logos. They all support different aspects of that connectivity experience, from workflow automation to content distribution as it relates to many of the, the things that you're working with. Now, as we heard yesterday, Damn at some organizations is where assets go to die. And I argue that's where assets go to live. Uh, in some cases, it is just a repository, and that's okay. But it eventually graduates into a production tool, or perhaps a business intelligence tool if you can apply content analytics to the metrics that matter to your business. Now, DAM helps with team collaboration and communication across different points of that content life cycle. And that's really key to connectivity. From strategy and planning, to content creation and production, review and approval, central themes here, <coughs> on through to centralized management, governance, and access controls across the enterprise. And then distribution and publishing of the right content to the right audiences, to all channels in this omni-channel world, as Nish talked about. And analyzing content performance and connecting content data to the metrics that your creative operations watch. So collaboration and communication are central to this, and a more complete DAM platform is a data-driven content hub consisting of integrated tool sets that support the content lifecycle at scale, and keyword integrated. Now with a range of tools in and around DAM, you can coordinate creative workflows and communication in a more central place streamline your creative operations, and bring visibility to all of the assets across the life cycle. And you have a bird's eye view of what you have or don't have. And you know you have the final version of an asset, which is key to preserve and protect your brand. Now brand portals, they offer the ability to share curated assets with different audiences. And we talked about this yesterday, not everyone really needs to work in the dam, and that's okay but they do need the right assets to do their job. And so there are different ways to do that. Portals are a more personalized way to share assets. Workflow, as we talk about, is a critical component to collaboration. And workflow tools that you'll, you'll see here, they allow you to plan and request content, schedule, route, proof, review and approval. We'll talk more about that later. But collaborating in one place will help your team work more efficiently. 
automate some of your project review and approval and keep an audit trail of all the changes intact with your assets. Again, collaboration is core to connectivity, as our research suggests. It's also worth noting that DAM does ex extend upstream all the way to the point of creative. You can work with assets tied to your DAM within the creative tools that your teams work in every day. Adobe Creative Cloud, Creative Suite. And with this, you can minimize work disruptions by working within these familiar applications, but know you're always working with assets connected to that central source. Now, at the other end of that spectrum of the content lifecycle, we talk about content analytics to provide some insights into how your content is being used and how it reaches your customers. Views, shares, usage across channels. This is a critical component to more data-driven decision-making. And some of this data can be exported and, and worked in within some of your business intelligence tools that are worth considering when you staff that data analyst or resource manager to your team. Now, while DAM on its own can do a lot for creativity, collaboration, and communication, it doesn't do everything. No tool really does. And these are just tools, as we've talked about. Tools can't do anything without you and the right process and the right people in place and the right information that is accessible to you. And you need to consider integration with other systems. As Jared talked about, DAMs are commonly integrated across the marketing and creative stack that include customer relationship management, product information management, creative tools, workflow and project management, as well as marketing automation, e-com, social media, everything that uses content to touch your customers. And with that, integration is key. As we talked about yesterday and some this morning, Tools don't work without your team on board. And when you're choosing the right solutions, you need to consider this process to do it right. And you must get stakeholder buy-in. As, as I said earlier, get those dancers on the dance floor and empower your champions to carry it further. Get your people together across different functions, cross-pollinate with different teams, and talk to your users. We talked about personas. Finally heard that P word this morning. <laughs> but understand how your different user personas work. And not only will you be able to match the right tools, but you'll really have some eye-opening ways about how they work to uncover new efficiency. So while we talk about data and metrics, take a little time just to observe how they work and match the right tools with that. So central to our connectivity themes, get the tech stack that advances how your team works best. Remember, technology should enhance the way humans work and that's central to connecting with each other. I want to share how a few Widen customers are applying some of these, these tools as well as some of the central themes to our connectivity research that we've discussed so far. And this story comes from Ivy at Delaware North. And Delaware North is a global food service and hospitality company. You may have seen them at malls and airports and stadiums across the country and all over the world. Now they use DAM to connect people with their brand and it all starts with their very large global brand. And they're making use of brand portals to make, make sure that the right people have access to the most current assets, clearly without mistake. And before DAM, their materials were living in multiple shared drives, file sharing tools all over the world with all the different teams that work with that. I'm sure you can relate to that. But they needed a central hub. And not only a hub, but they needed a way to connect all of the brand assets with people that weren't as connected to the brand. So brand portals bring it together for that purpose. And that goes for all of their copy, brand assets, fonts, colors, and everything that is used to represent that Delaware North brand. With that, they equip their external teams, their internal teams, agencies, partners, and everyone with what they need to do their jobs. And it's all connected back to their creative operation. Now this next uh, short story comes from Latricia at Spectrum Brands Railvac. This is one of my favorite stories of recent and how they're using DAM and workflow tools to connect the key people across the process. And this goes beyond their creative team because they have a, a huge legal interest in making sure that review and approval is, is on point. So Spectrum Brands, as you may know, is a global consumer products company and Rayovac makes batteries. And they're using online proofing tools to manage the creative process and provide approved assets to all of their, their, their retailers fast and effectively. And this goes from product photography to packaging. This centralizes the creative process for them from the creative brief or project intake form 
all the way through to online proofing, approval, and tracking, and then finalized assets distributed from the dam. Their legal team, as I said, has a heavy interest in this to make sure that all copy, all content, all packaging is, is, is up to standard. All finalized assets are, are seamlessly released into their library so that they can be working with the essential assets all the time. And they have this project dashboard that provides them with visibility into project status to see what actions are required for approval and, and next steps. And the online proofing allows everyone to collaborate in one place without having to route emails uh, that cause a lot of disjointed effort. So all that feedback on the work provided is centrally managed with the assets, the proofs, and the metadata. Now this wouldn't be a, a good damn presentation without talking about metadata and creatives and marketers can't connect with their audiences without using meaningful ways to connect content with metadata and measurement. So we look at how Michael at New Balance Footwear and Apparel, as you may know, is connecting content with metadata and measurement as part of its production process. And at New Balance, DAM creates search effectiveness, which results in marketing efficiency gains with more asset reuse. Now, New Balance has taken their DAM initiatives further with many configurations to get more value from their, their creative assets with their metadata and tagging process. In fact, they've had at least three DAMs over the last decade and making their assets smart with metadata enriched in the asset has allowed them to transition across tools more seamlessly. Given the volume and velocity at which they work, many of which uh, you can relate, they rely on some of the metadata automation tools to upload and tag 250 new assets a day right after the point of capture. And they use an Adobe XMP metadata editor to assist with the tagging because 80% of their assets are part of their product photography workflow. They do use a custom namespace in Photoshop, and it's mapped to the same custom namespace in DAM, so that the metadata always flows with the file, regardless of the systems and the channels. And they can tag assets with this custom metadata before it goes into the DAM, because as it's been talked about here, so much of the tagging process that should take place after the point of capture just does not. And they've solved that problem to make metadata work for them, so it's not so much of a chore later on. Now, that's important to note that just because 85% of this process is automated, it does not remove the human element. They do have an entire uh, damn team dedicated to making sure that their processes are adhered to and every file is tagged as it should. So again, it's about tech and touch. And given that metadata automation supports scalable content management and greater search effectiveness, New Balance has greater insights into how and how often their content is being used and where it's being used. And this metadata comes full circle as their content assets get used. And they can apply this usage analytics to uncover search trends, to know what their different audiences are looking for so they can apply the right content. It provides some insight into some of the product marketing trends, as well as the visual preferences for the New Balance brand. And that informs what they do going forward. So they can apply this insight into what they produce or do not produce next. And since DAM connects their entire marketing experience through metadata and measurement, uh, brands like New Balance can connect that content analytics to some of their business insights for some of the business decisions that they make. So these are just a few ways in which some widened customers like you are using DAM and workflow tools to connect their content across the customer experience and the content lifecycle. And here's Nina to offer a few more takeaways for tech and touch. Well, we covered a lot in a short period of time. So we're going to wrap with some key things that you can apply to your work after you leave here, based on our research and then based on these stories that we've shared. So first, the most digitized teams are not necessarily the most connected. Put your people and your processes before the systems that you implement. Again, something we've been talking a lot about. But that's if you really want your people to be connected. That's what you need to do to connect your people. Um, and remember, tools like DAM, workflow, project management, they're meant to support and augment people, like Jake was saying, not replace them. Um, try to create authentic, relatable experiences that build connection and engagement. Uh, this is something we talk a lot about as creatives. But experiences that neglect the human element really risk alienating people at every customer touchpoint. And like Mike from LinkedIn said, 
ask the teams closest to us, like sales, marketing, customer service, and others, for information about our audiences and create content that answers their questions or solves their problems. This will build a direct, ownable connection with your audience. And with so many options out there, be selective. Use digital tools that will only move your business forward and optimize your creative operations, like DAM, workflow, project management, and a lot of the other tools that we've talked about here at this conference. Technology overload is real, and it can consume time that would be much better spent creating impactful design. And as always, keep it human. So that's all we've got for you. I think we do have some time for questions, if anybody has any questions. Yes? Um, we'll talk about connectivity and community, and one of the things that I'm seeing a lot more is UGC content, and how you really um, work with other companies that deal with integrating UGC content into the work stream. Yeah, we love that topic of user-generated content. Quick poll, who is incorporating user-generated content into your branded content today? That's awesome, about a quarter of you. So we've, we've worked with a few customers who are doing an incredible job of engaging their loyal social following through contests and, and social communities to get some great branded content. And if you want to see a brand doing it well, Mini, Mini USA, kind of like Harley Davidson for, for cars, Mini USA, holds a monthly photo contest and they have many micro communities in which they inspire their loyal following to take photos of their adventures in their mini with their family, with their dog, share it on their social media. And they find that they get some great photography out of that, free. Uh, they have semi-pro photographers you know, submitting their user-generated content through Facebook or Instagram to make it part of the next mini brand campaign, the website, and they do automate that. There, there's a few uh, hacky ways that you can accomplish this for free with tools like Dropbox and If This Then That or Zapier to capture content from, from Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, bring it into a central place that could be as simple as Dropbox, and then there's other ways of, of capturing that uh, through other, other tools from, from DAM and Workflow to make sure it's all centrally managed. You do, do got to pay attention to some of the rights um, from that to make sure you get proper rights sign off. But you can see a great example of that right on miniusa.com. Uh, do, do you have more that you want to share about how you might be using user generated content? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's very, we're, talk, we're talking about more and more, and the, the really tricky thing is the rights issues. Yeah. Uh, uh, trying to get the, both the touch points either through Instagram or, or Facebook and the tools that, that are available because a lot of times when you're reaching out to many users, sometimes like Instagram thinks that you're, um, you're spamming them. And so uh, that, becomes a, that becomes a problem in terms of trying to get uh, engagement. Yeah. Um, and then, then you have also have to get there, thereby to kind of use, like, use their uh, images. The question that we're trying to solve right now is that once we get the buy-in, uh, how can we not just use it for that specific social channel, but perhaps integrate it into our game app so that it becomes more usable throughout the entire company? Um, that has added implications to that, so it's, it's, it's kind of a new thing that our, that our lawyers are very not so excited about, yeah. um, but we're kind of yeah, We found there has not been a lot of precedent to how you manage the legal side of UGC. Good question. We have to talk more about other approaches. Any other questions around connectivity? <coughs> Daniel. All right. Thank you all. We'll get ready for our next session.